Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot coming at you with the Wiki Comic Book Roundup. We're in the home stretch now. Uh, all we got left are this week's Batman books. So let's get started with Batman number 127. We're going to 30th anniversary of Harley Quinn uh, variant. So continuing, Failsafe. Where we left off in an effort to uh, stop Failsafe, Batman. Uh, became the Batman of Zero and R. So the issue begins with a flashback to uh, shortly after the events of Tower of Babel. Superman comes to uh, the cave and get in Says that Batman knew that uh, he'd be voted out of the league. And during the whole talk about it, about Bruce's contingency plans. Bruce Pruitt pulls up, did you die? To Batman. It's a Superman. And he, but Bruce does let on that he he takes the cowl off and tells Superman that he made a mistake. And the mistake wasn't keeping the files the files of the League of Control could decimate the planet after all. The mistake was not keeping them secure enough. And so Superman asks what Bruce's contingency for himself is. Apparently, according to, to Bruce, it's the Justice League. In the present, Batman uh, shows Tim the the cave, the bat cave of the Batman of Zero and R. And uh, Tim remembers reading about uh, the Batman of Zero and R in the Black Case Files. Basically, it's a a Batman that it, it's just Batman, no Bruce Wayne. But Failsafe shows up. And uh, so Batman and Failsafe duke it out. Robin helps, uh, but uh, back in Gotham, uh, Nightwing is discussing what happened with, uh, with Oracle. Apparently, Batgirl Stephanie has been uh, injured badly enough that. Uh, there's a need to remove her mask, but uh, that even tells them not to remove the mask. Um, but uh, Barbara states there are uh, traps all across Gotham. No casualties, but the but. They need to make sure there aren't any, there won't be any. However, they feel deliberate you know, distractions so that they don't save Batman. And Dick says that he thinks they need backup, and uh, Barbara's on it. The fight between uh, Batman and Felsen continues into, the, into uh, Wayne Manor itself. And uh, when Failsafe goes to uh, damage a picture of Bruce and Alfred, Batman strikes, telling him to get away from the same way from Alfred. During the fight, however, um, Batman is uh, Batman is in R is faced with the fact that yeah, he has to you know 
you know, there are per the, the Bruce Wayne side does have its perks. With Bruce Wayne Batman telling Zer and R in their shared head consciousness that uh, Tim isn't Bruce's soldier. He's Bruce's son. And so Batman's back in control and uh, gets manages to get Tim out of the ma the, man the manor as it starts as it catches fire. Uh, Failsafe beats the hell out of Batman, and Batman is just like you know, it's kind of you know, it, it would be a good death being there with all those men dying, you know, in, in the manner of all the memories. However, the fire is promptly put out by a new arrival. Superman. Which brings us to our backup story. Continuing the uh, Catwoman-centric uh, tale, Two Birds, One Throne. In Metropolis, a man is buying uh, a blueberry muffin for breakfast. Apparently he's, he's trying a diet. Cutting back on the chocolate chips. He um, arrives at a flower shop when Catwoman walks in. And immediately figure, figures the uh, man as being none other than Oswald Cobblepot. But, uh,. So, you know, while the bird sanctuary was legit, the, the bookkeeper said bird sanctuary was not. A, a former, uh, someone that uh, Penguin did time with. But, uh, Selena and Oswald split the muffin. And, uh, she skipped breakfast to get there, to get to Metropolis on time. And she's not really a morning person. And well, Oswald says neither neither was he. Adding that what is, what is it about Gotham that makes them all night people? It's like well, they all know how dangerous. They all know it's so dangerous when the sun goes down that they can't even sleep through it. But he tells us he just that he just wanted some daylight. But she informs him that his children are dead. Which is not what Oswald wanted. He hoped that they, he thought they'd all bond over his death. Because he was a jerk to them. Sure, he wanted the, the best of them to rise to the top to succeed. But he didn't expect carnage. He just wants peace. His life in Gotham was a constant fight. He kept wanting to go higher with the lounge, with his aspirations. And he thinks part, part of that was to play his success in Batman's face. To say he did it. That no matter how, how many times the, that rich brooding model got, tried to get into his business, he bounced back. Climbed the ladder even, even when uh, Batman put his boot on his fingers. But he, he tells her he, he doesn't want to go back to Gotham. Batman's an addiction that all, all of them have. And apparently they talked, though, for an hour. And Kevin says she doesn't think they ever really, ever really talked. Talking about fears, legacy, what drives them to do what they do. And of course, Gotham. But she asked about framing his, framing Batman for his death. And apparently, that was just a little final fun, as 
like as if Batman won't bounce back from that. There are always thorns to him. The sting here and there before he plucks them out once again. But Catwoman agrees to keep his secret, adding that Agent Harris and Cobblepot will ha have to pay for what they've done. Then Penguin gets it. He's not going to stand in the way. She suspects the fact that he won't stand in anyone's way ever again. But, uh, while reading, presumably, the Daily Planet, uh, an article on, uh, the hip of the iceberg, or entitled The Hip of the Iceberg, about the new owners, is up, and he says to the he says to the paper that the, that the cat and the bat, and tells them to, says tell, tells the picture of them to make her make their father proud. But she said, Catwoman stays the night in Metropolis. She doesn't want to burn my life down and work in a flower shop. There's something to it, starting from scratch, breaking the cycles. She's got she's got plenty of those after all. She's not ready to leave Gotham. May never be ready. But maybe there's some cycles that she can break. She just needs a plan. <sighs> and to be a bigger thorn. And that is where our backup story ends. And that wraps up Batman 127. Definitely getting interesting. Uh, I, I honestly I like the fact of uh, re of the Bat Family calling in reinforcements, especially league level reinforcements. Moving on to our next book, we've got Poison Ivy number four. Where we left off, Ivy was uh, planning to Ivy knowing she's dying was planning to distribute the uh, the plant particles that she the poisonous plant particles she's carrying as far as possible. So she's gotten a job at a uh, at a warehouse for a uh, well totally not Amazon. Um, the boss she's doing the interview. Um, Boss is kind of a jerk. He tries to be nice. Tries to play off being nice, but uh, she's just, you know some of the plant growth starts to become visible on her on Ivy, so she cover doesn't she get to cover up and say it's just allergies. But uh, one of the uh, one of the women at the uh, at the warehouse is Tatum showing Ivy around. Though uh, the boss seems a little bit touchy with her, um, it's made very clear that it's supposed to be um, Amazon. As uh, well, Ivy sold. You know, if you got a pee, go on a go on a bottle. You know, if you got to do do the other thing, wait till you get home. Upon seeing the uh, the warehouse floor. She does what she thinks, and she softly says that she thinks the hallucinations are getting worse. But, uh... The packages are going... are headed all over the country. The ones she packs will be teeming with toxic lamia spores, bearing gifts. She has she can't she can't stop the endless flow of stuff around the globe, but she can weaponize it. But uh Jessalyn is uh the boss comes down to talk to Jessalyn and they go off and a little while later she comes back and Ivy asks she's okay. But uh, 
she says she's going to do something about, about uh, Halloran. Persu says she'll persuade, maybe she'll try to persuade him to hate himself. And she goes full plant goddess on him and uh, tells him that he's going to that he's going to uh, give a glowing recommendation, glowing forms to review everyone on the warehouse floor, recommend them for a raise, and to support their intent to form a union. Also, he's going to, he's going to email his boss, admit that he's been sexually harassing employees. When asked why he would, when she, when he asked why he would do that, Ivy tells him that because. He's only got 10 more minutes to live, and she can make that time very unpleasant if she chooses. But uh, he types up everything that she tells him to, and then he dies. She comes back and she tells Justin that George won't be bothering her anymore. In fact, Ivy wouldn't be surprised if today was the last day he'll ever show up there. Jessalyn kisses Ivy, and uh, the two of them go back to Jessalyn's place, spend the evening together. Um, apparently, the whole time, Ivy was thinking of Harley. But, uh, later, there's an attack by a, by a plant monster. Making it clear that Ivy has not been hallucinating the giant plant monsters. <clears throat> Ivy insists that the plant monster tell her who sent it. Who sent it? With a name, the Green Man. But uh, Ivy leaves, uh, telling Jessalyn that it's safer if if she does if she does so. It's safer for. Jessalyn, if she does so, that is. But uh, now that she now that she knows the Green Man is coming for him, it's a good thing get, that the Green Man doesn't Green Man doesn't know that she's coming for him as well. That is where the issue ends. I'm really liking this book. It, it's yeah, it, it, it's great and. It, it is serious. I, I didn't like the idea of there being a Joker title that came out recently. Um, I've heard it's more. I, I've actually heard the title is more of a uh, a Jim Gordon book, but yeah. With Ivy, it's just like it, Poison Ivy. I, I feel kind of falls into the same camp as uh, Magneto. A villain who has become something of a hero because it's every year it's just harder and harder to say they're to call them a bad guy because well yeah but anyway moving on to our next book we've got sort of Azrael number two where we left off vengeance and her uh, mercenaries were attacking the uh, um, the monastery that uh, Azrael was at after a after they took in a, uh, a a trap, a young traveler, who, upon picking up Azrael's flaming sword, sla uh, slaughtered the rest of the monks. Unbeknownst at the moment to Azrael, so Azrael takes on vengeance, who apparently forgives her for uh, breaking Bane back in the day. Um, but they've been. They've been hired by the Knights Templar to, br to bring in uh, the girl. Um, but as things, there's no way to be. The mission's compromised as far as vengeance is concerned, and so her, her, her mercs pull back. And one of the uh, monks ends up taking a knight to the hand. Um, but Jean Paul goes in and sees the, the results of uh, Brielle's handiwork.
Azrael is able to talk her down, realizing she must have some variation, variant of the system inside of her as well. But uh, they leave the monastery. The surviving monk is left a note by uh, Jean Paul, and they go to Athens. Um, Jean Paul explains everything about being Azrael, about his life as Azrael to Brielle, but uh, she's still fairly convinced that she is an angel. <sighs> Much in the same way Azrael is. But uh, he decides he's going to pray on things, and of course they're being watched by Vengeance and the poor fellow, one of the Knights Templar, who Azrael recently encountered in uh, in Gotham. He was she was beheading folks, which got uh, Batman thinking maybe Azrael had gone back on the whole no killing thing. While praying, he once again uh, Jean Paul speaks to the angel Azrael, and basically dives into the memories that uh, he had implanted. While, do, while this is going on, uh, the poor fellow comes to uh, speak with uh, Brielle, basically trying to get her, get her to come with, to leave that Jean-Paul, and reinforcing, yes, she truly is an angel. And convince, she also convinces, the poor fellow also convinces uh, for uh, Riel to take uh, Azrael's sword. And that is where the issue ends. I'm really digging this. I, I like the idea of Azrael having his own book again. Um, I, don't think I, I honestly don't believe I've ever I read any of the other solo books with him or the old miniseries that introduced him or any of that. I think the only, stuff I ever, only books I've read with Azrael were largely either guest, guest spots in the various Bat books or his brief or an issue or two here or there of his brief time as Batman during uh, the Nightfall uh, saga. Moving on to our, our next book, we've got Batman Beyond, Neo Year number six. Where we left off, Terry was making uh, plans for, to take down the Gotham AI and it was all and also managed to get himself a new costume. So it's New Year's Eve, and uh, everything seems to be going off without a hitch. But uh, Gotham AI can't seem to see Terry anymore. Misses him almost. Uh, Batman begin working on his plan, including recruiting uh, former Commissioner Barbara Gordon to work with the Gestalt, and making some inroads with the Jokers. Getting Bean Boonma on board. And so at 15 minutes to midnight, they go after, uh, Batman goes after Donovan Lumos's uh, big party. And we get a uh, redone version of. Uh, a slightly, a slightly changed version of uh, Batman's Year One speech. It. Neo Gotham, you have eaten well. You chewed up the poor and distracted the rich. You swallowed industry and chewed law enforcement as a chum. You lit up the sky and infected the mind, and claimed both as your own. But you are just the ground we walk upon. You're the thing we built. The future of the city doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the darkness you can't see. The ones beneath your notice. The crumbs on your plate. The future belongs to the night. But uh, Batman shows up and Gotham activates all of the uh, partygoers into being Swords of Gotham. And one of the... Uh, and part of the plan is triggered. Um... The Gestalt is trying to, uh... Mm. Basically, uh, counterman, uh, Gotham's system. 
quite the firewall though. Boomba is leading a squad of uh, ex-cops and uh, GCPD spinners being, and being coordinated by Commissioner Gordon. Evacuation proceeds as pl proceeds, and uh, then Batman goes after Lumos. They argue, and Batman realizes that Lumos doesn't actually don't know what's going on, and so Batman tells him Lumos doesn't believe him. That said, Gotham is uh, upping the timeline, activating uh, various systems, or activating various parts of her. Uh, it being spread throughout Gotham, throughout the city. Um, but, uh, like I said, Terry explains the whole thing to Lumos, and, uh, well, Lumos says, okay, fine, I opt in. And so, the Gotham AI takes him over, and turns him into a, a uh, supercharged version of uh, Sword of Gotham. But, uh, Batman starts. Basically, Batman does what he can to defensively fight uh, Lumos when the Jokers attack, destroying the uh, party barge with rocket launchers while all wearing jetpacks, too. But uh, Lumos is uh, saved from falling to his death. Um, the investigation into the mayor's death is opened. Um, Lumos is laying low and trying to figure out, trying to figure out how to turn a how to turn a buck. Terry has a date with, with Boonma. Who thanks it? They thank they both thank each other for everything the other did. And. Uh, While hanging out in one of the, the uh, low-tech areas, the series ends with the promise that Batman Beyond will return in 2023. I really enjoyed this book, this series. It, it was it was fun. It, it's honestly a lot of this exactly what I would want out of a Batman Beyond book: growing the world and you know showing more of the future of of Gotham City. And now we come to our last book for the week. Batman, Dear Detective. I think this is a one-shot. I'm fairly certain it's a one-shot. Uh, well, guess we'll find out. Uh, basically, it doesn't have a book one on it anywhere. Um, but, uh, basically, this is a collection of uh, artist Lee Norbejo's uh, Covers for for Batman books for for some time. Actually, I think a lot of a lot of these are going to be the, the alternate covers. He's or the variant covers he's done for uh, Detective Comics, uh, but with a uh, narrative to kind of you know turn them into a story. A letter written to Batman from an unknown uh, villainous party, but uh, like I said, the pretty much all of. Mermejo's recent detective covers are here, as well as his uh, Gotham, Gotham City Villains uh, one-shot uh, cover. But, uh, just, yeah, ab absolutely beautiful. The artwork is, yeah. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. I, I, I can't hype this up enough. Uh, yeah, as, I'm, as I said, I'm fairly certain this is a one shot. And that is going to do it for now. That's going to do it for this week's roundup. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying. 
live long and rock hard.